So I decided to run because I've spent my entire career fixing really messy, complicated organizations, and New York State has been failing the 20 million New Yorkers uh, across the board. Uh, I think we see that in uh, every example of our daily life, whether it's cost of living, taxes, spiking crime, um, the mismanagement of the pandemic, you know, kind of across the board, we've seen a total failure of leadership. I think it's driven by a class of career politicians in both sides of the aisle that are more interested in getting reelected than they are in actually making a difference for people. And I've spent my whole life fixing organizations like that to really reorient themselves around the customer, which is us, the, the taxpayers and the voters. When I was approached by many people to run uh, a year ago, and when I finished that work, some of those same people came back to me and said, would you reconsider? And I looked at the facts on the ground. I thought there were really two questions. The first is, do any of the folks who are in the field today have the uh, ability to win in November and actually be an effective governor? And I thought the answer was no. And then I said, can I, you know, even at this point, can I actually win a primary, win a general election, and, and be the transracial governor I think the state needs? It's a hard road, but I've, I thought I had a shot at doing all three. And so that's why I decided to come in. And so what do you make of, you know, Lee Zeldin now officially the designee. Do you think that he can win a statewide race? Or do you think that his support of Trump and his votes on the 2020 election leaves him vulnerable in a statewide race? So I don't think Congressman Zeldin can win statewide, but it's not because of ideology. It's really about him as a total package. So if you look at him and his entirety as a as in his career in public life, he's been you know a politician his entire career. He has um, served in office for most of the last 15 years. He hasn't accomplished anything for the state of New York. Uh, he voted lock, stock, and barrel with the Combo agenda for his, all his years at Albany. Uh, and he has no executive experience. So I think in the totality of his experience, there is nothing that would recommend him to be a successful governor. And I think he, he's also, uh, uh, politically, he's never shown the ability to win crossover votes. He's run in the same district for 15 years, and he's gotten more or less consistent party line votes. To win statewide in New York as a Republican, you need to be able to attract independents and conservative and moderate Democrats who are disaffected from their party for whatever reason. In the last 20 years, only one person who's, who's run statewide has been able to do that, that was me. Uh, in my first and only campaign, you know, I was, was the closest by far. I almost beat a popular incumbent in Tom DiNapoli in 2010. And no one else who's run in the last 20 years has come within 10 points of my, my role in race. You know, I've, I grew up a working class kid in a Greek immigrant household in upstate New York. I've been incredibly blessed in my career and my life. And I think that's what everybody in New York wants for their kids and their family. So I was you know, born in Johnstown. My mom had moved there from Greece 11 months before I was born. Johnstown's a working class community about an hour north of Albany, wonderful hometown. Uh, it had been a um, um, industrial town in the early part of the 20th century, large immigrant population. And unfortunately, a lot of those factories went overseas in the 60s and 70s. And so when I was growing up, it was economically very challenged. So my mom moved there from Greece. My dad was born there. Both his parents had come from Greece. So we're a first generation Greek American. We only spoke Greek at home. I didn't learn English until nursery school. Uh, and so that was, that was part of it. And we also didn't have, you know, we were certainly working class family. My dad was a bartender. My mom was a sewing machine operator. Um, so yeah, economically challenged, but we had food on the table. My parents did everything possible to help my sister and I have a, have a wonderful life. Um, but when I was a little kid, I had some serious health problems. So when I was born, my legs were all messed up. I had these heavy braces on my legs. The doctors told my mom I, I may never be able to walk. Um, she would stay up at night. She had been a, a nurse in a, in, a, um, in a facility in Greece before she'd come to the U.S. And she would stay up at night with, you know, kind of basically, uh, you know, kind of old-fashioned PT, physical therapy, just working with me and my legs to try to help them grow straight. Um, so I had, so that worked out well. I ended up being captain and MVP of my high school cross country team. So I was able to overcome that, but it was, you know, it was concerning, you know, when I was a little kid. And then when I was about 13 months old, I was badly burned. I knocked over a, a mug of uh, scalding coffee uh, and just burned much of my body. And so some of those scars, you know, uh, almost 50 years later, but it's a, uh, so it was a lot of adversity. Um, you know, we, uh, but my parents were always, you know, they were, my parents were incredible. They were always looked out for us. They always said, just keep, you know, putting one foot in front of the other and just keep working hard uh, as they did in their lives. And there's no doubt that that, you know, kind of uh, upbringing informs so much of my life. Like when I go into these situations, and these turnarounds are really dire. You know, companies are almost out of cash. Everybody's worried about their jobs. By definition, no one's been able to fix it, or else I want to be there. And, um, and so you look at that, and that, by the way, I think that's a, it's a great analogy for the state. You look at it and people say, well, it can't be fixed. But I've just know through you know, establishing a plan, 
developing a clear vision, executing on that plan relentlessly, uh, and working and, and rallying people to get to it. It's worked to my personal life, it's worked to my business life, and I believe it'll work really well in, in New York State. So what do you think is the most pressing problem in the state? So I wish there was only one. The, the, the problem is we have you know, some of the, the things that affect people most all either at, at all time lows or spiking at the same time. So we have the highest taxes in the country. We have the highest cost of living in the country. We have spiking crime at every city across the, uh, the state, uh, not just New York City, you know, every city across the state. And so I think those things are the you know, kind of tie for the most pressing. Um, they all come back to the same core problem which is that you know, ultimately we have leadership at Albany that's failed to deliver on the things that really matter to working people. Um, and so there's a lot of lip service paid to it, but at the end of the day, not a lot of actual results.